Hello, and welcome to QuantPy. In this video, we are going to show how to derive the density of a function, or the transform, of a random variable whose density we know. Let's represent the given random variable by x. We assume that it takes values on the real line. The probability of this variable taking values below a certain value, say small x, can be represented as follows, which is essentially the cumulative distribution function. And once we have fixed the probability measure and the random variable on which it is defined, then the distribution function is just a function of the upper limit or the small x. The density function is just the derivative of the distribution function with respect to this x. Assuming we know this formula, the question that we tackle is as follows. Assume we have another random variable which is a continuous, monotonic, function of x. We have written the variables in capital, just to emphasize they take random values. We will write them in small, when we bring them into the calculus context. So, we now have another random variable, whose distribution, and density functions can be represented analogously, as follows. And we want to determine this density, assuming we know the density of x, and the functional relationship between, x, and, y. Now, let's try to determine the distribution function or the cumulative probability of y. As y is a function of x, we can write it as follows. We would like to write the random variable in terms of x because the probability measure we are using to calculate the probability is defined on x, which we can achieve by taking the inverse of both sides. But we need to check the type of relationship that this function represents so that we can map the events correctly. First assume that y is an increasing function of x. Then, the event that y takes value less than 2 as represented by the gray area and marked by the red lines corresponds to x taking values below the vertical red line. And this point on the x-axis is just what the inverse of the function f will produce when one feeds it the given value of y. So we can take the inverse of both sides of the inequality to get the rest is easy now. Taking differential of both sides, we get. We can write the differential on the left-hand side, alternatively, as follows. Analogously, the differential on the right-hand side, becomes. Looks complicated, but it really is the same differential, in terms of x, which is the inverse of y. And we know, the derivative of the distribution function is just the density, so we get. And isolating density of y, on the left hand side, we get. Now, let's assume, that y is a decreasing function of x. Then, the event, that y takes value less than 2, as represented by the gray area, and marked by the red lines, corresponds to, x taking values above, the vertical red line. So taking the inverse, we reverse, the inequality. Easy way to see this is, that lower values of y correspond to higher values of x. As the total probability sums to 1, we can write it as 1 minus the probability of the lower values. The rest is the same as before, except that we will have a minus sign. Taking differential of both sides, we get. As before, we can write the differentials, alternatively, as follows. And replacing the derivative of the distribution function, with the density and isolating the density of y, on the left hand side, we get. So, do we have negative density now? Recall that the function is a decreasing function, so the derivative will give a negative number, which when multiplied by the minus sign, will become positive. So we can get rid of the minus sign by taking the absolute value of the derivative. This formula will then hold for both increasing and decreasing functions. Recall that we assumed that the function is continuous and monotonic. A more general formula can be derived, but this simple formula should suffice for our purposes. Let's demonstrate the transformation with examples. Let's assume x is normally distributed with some given mean and variance. Recall that the density of a normal variable is as follows. Now, let's assume we have been asked to calculate the density of the exponential of x under the same probability measure. 
we will need the inverse function and the derivative which we quickly calculate. The inverse of exponential is just the log function, so we get the derivative of log is easy to calculate. Now, let's recall the density transformation formula. Plugging in the inverse function and its derivative that we just calculated, we get substituting for the density of x, evaluated at the given value of log of y, we get the log normal density formula. Now, let's assume x is standard normal. Recall that the density of a standard normal variable is as follows. Now, let's assume we have been asked to calculate the density of a linear function of x under the same probability measure. We will need the inverse function and the derivative which we quickly calculate. Now, let's recall the density transformation formula. Plugging in the inverse function and its derivative, we get replacing the function f with the density of standard normal we get the normal density. We will show the last example visually. This example is just a rehash of the previous examples. We assume x is standard normal. Recall that the density of a standard normal variable is bell shaped, as shown on the chart. Now, let's assume we have been asked to calculate the density of the exponential of x, which we plot here. This function maps the values of x to the y axis. The probability density of y, as we showed before will be, log normal and we plot it along the vertical axis. Let's see, how the slope of the function, y, affects the mapping, of a fixed size interval on the x-axis. When the function is less steep, this interval maps to a very small interval of the random variable, y, and hence we get more area, under the density of y, you can view this as compensation for the loss, of the interval size because the total area has to be preserved. As the graph of y becomes steeper, the same size interval maps to a larger interval on the y-axis and hence the density of y becomes smaller. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we look forward to seeing you in the next.